Hello everybody, hello vinyl community. So uh, Vinyl Tech 2022 is already heavily on its way. Um, Rob Walker has designed the questionnaire. And um, yeah, I've already seen that many people answered and uh, created their own videos. So um, that's my turn now. Um, I try to keep it quick and dirty because 22 questions, that's a lot of records and um, you know how I tend to ramble. Uh, so um, let me get right into it. And uh, the one thing I don't want to do is to take every album out of the out of the sleeve uh, uh, because it's quite a lot of records. And um, I just have to pay attention that uh, there is just not too much glare on the plastic sleeve. So um, 22 questions. Question number one, uh, favorite album purchased in 2021? I probably have to go with Asia Minor, Between Flesh and Divine. Uh, this is already a album from uh, the early 80s, a progressive rock band. Uh, Turkish musicians and French musicians together in the studio, creating this wonderful record. It's quite an exciting album, a little bit in the style of Camel, maybe or a Canterbury scene band. This is a limited reissue from 2015. Um, hand numbered. <laughs> so, um, next question. Album by first person, or band I guess, you saw live. So my very first concert, the very first band I ever saw live in my whole life was uh, The Police. Um, so I thought uh, Ghost in the Machine is a good album. Uh, when I saw them live, this was like 1983, I think, so they had been already playing stuff from Synchronicity at this point. And yeah, this was a uh, impressive concert for a young boy that is easily impressed. Um, number three, album by a duo. Well, the duo of all duos, of course, Dead Can Dance, Spleen and Ideal, Brandon Perry and Lisa Gerrard. So that's most certainly my favorite duo, but uh, you probably knew that. Next, number four, album in the shrink, so an album that has not yet been opened. Thankfully, I just received an album today, which is the new record by Al Doom and the Farids, um, which is called Cosmic Love, and uh, this is an amazing uh, band from Milano in Italy playing a uh, jazz fusion uh, combined with a strong um, kind of psychedelic rock vibe and uh, a lot of uh, elements from uh, Indian music, particularly kind of Central Asian, Middle Eastern music. And uh, as you see, it's still packed and uh, we will open it right now. So uh, let's see how this goes. And uh, because usually I can't remove shrink wraps quickly enough because I hate shrink wraps. I just don't like them. I know that people, some people that collect records uh, can try to keep them on the record so they carefully open it and so they can remove the disc, but um, they always keep the shrink wrap on. That would kind of drive me crazy because I just hate them. So I really enjoy this feeling of ripping it all away and freeing the album. Yes, that's why you came here, to see me doing it. <laughs> so um, this is Al Doom and the Farid's um, wonderful contemporary jazz fusion band. Um, well, let's look inside. So, uh, and uh, yeah, the download code for MP3s. I hope bands will not stop doing this because I'm a big fan of these download codes. And uh, unfortunately, what I've realized in 2021 and even already in 2020 is that uh, while this was a big thing, like in 2017, 18, 19, bands kind of do it less and less. And oftentimes you buy a record kind of expecting to be a a download code for mp3s inside and um, it becomes more and more rare. That's at least my impression. So, um, all right. 
let's continue. Um, number five is a concept album. Yeah, I have no shortage of concept albums in my vinyl archive. So uh, this is uh, the Rainbow Goblins by Masayoshi Takanaka, a double album. Uh, Masayoshi Takanaka is a great uh, guitar virtuoso from Japan. Um, very funky in his style, uh, kind of a typical Stratocaster player with a certain surf rock uh, twang. Uh, but uh, this here is a kind of a step a little more into the realm of progressive rock. I mean, his previous records were much more kind of a jazz funk records, a very uh, kind of lofty and very uh, groovy. And uh, it's certainly still here, but uh, this is more like a conceptual kind of story arc. Um, and uh, certainly some wonderful playing and a, quite a wonderful uh, jacket, as you can see. So this kind of Masayoshi Takanaka uh, expanding into the realm of fantasy. So that's my example of an album um, which has a concept in it. Oh, and by the way, in my original take of this video, I have skipped a question. Um, it was the question number six album you've not played yet. Um, so um, this little piece is like an insert. Um, to remedy that, and the album I have not played yet is the Release Yourself by the Graham Central Station. I know what expects me on this album. Um, wonderful funk playing of the highest order. I hope I'll give it a listen very soon. I mean, who doesn't like Larry Graham? Artists you've discovered in 2021. Well, let's take this one because this is an outstanding record and I really love it. It's Hizuru. Hizuru is a Japanese project combining jazz with uh, traditional Japanese instruments and uh, the result is a very beautiful atmospheric journey over the length of an album and um, yeah, very pleasant music uh, regardless if you pay close attention uh, to the tracks or have it kind of in the background while you are working, both works pretty well. Um, it's an excellent album and uh, certainly a chance to give a little shout out to Big Star 1000 who was uh, the inspiration uh, to get this one so a uh, great record and uh, wonderful sound if you are into kind of contemporary uh, jazz but at the same time interested in Asian Asian um, influences next one is uh, a live album well, let's go with the best. Uh, then by the Alan Holdsworth group. Um, so this one is uh, with Steve Hunt on keyboards, Jimmy Johnson uh, on bass and Gary Husband on drums. And uh, of course, Alan Holdsworth on guitar. And uh, yeah, I think this was recorded in, in Japan and uh, is uh, yeah, in Tokyo in uh, May 4 to 6, 1990. So, um, yeah, already over 30 years ago, time flies. Um, um, I really like this type of live albums for one particular reason, because a lot of my favorite bands were really big at a certain point in time. I'm talking bands like Yes or MS or like Palmer, etc. And uh, so they presented their live albums in a time where they were ju these giants. And so their famous live albums have been usually recorded in very, very large stadium type of venues. And so they kind of really don't sound that great. I mean, you get the atmosphere, but it's not something you really uh, can immerse yourself as far as uh, the quality of the recording goes. And um, yeah, I, this is an old, often debated issue. Now, bands like Alan Holdsworth played in much smaller theaters with uh, probably like, uh, I don't know, five, six hundred people which allows a much better situation just to capture sound when you want to record a live album. So usually these, these typical uh, jazz fusion giants have much better live albums. Um, and that's not because they have better recording engineers or something like that, but because they play in smaller venues and you can capture the music much better. You can control the sound much better in a, in a place that can only, where only 400 people can fit. Anyway, uh, album from a different continent. I have a lot of those, uh, so why not Africa by Demon Fuzz? 
Um, this is a album that came at the beginning of the 70s. Uh, so this is a kind of psychedelic rock, uh, funky Afrobeat record uh, with a big lineup and a great brass section and so on. So um, this is a cool record and um, quite a wonderful uh, moment in time captured on an album. So Demon Fuzz and their album Africa. Oh, uh, what next? What next? Um, album with a prize sticker on the jacket. Let me just take some more here in my hands so it goes faster. Yeah, what about this one? School Days by Stan Clark. Uh, this comes with a prize sticker here. And even under the prize sticker, there is this kind of a... How do you call these big stickers? There's a kind of a word for it, uh, vinyl terminology. Now, this album cost... 990 German marks, so um, a currency long gone and uh, still uh, cried over by some who <laughs> still can't get on board with the euro and <laughs> I don't blame them. Um, yeah, this is a wonderful, very funky uh, album by Stanley Clark, who kind of started more. His first solo album was, I mean, even his second one. Much more, much more in a jazz fusion realm, very technical in parts. Um, but from album to album, he was moving more and more towards funk and, and soul. And this is a cool record. School Days, uh, Stanley Clark. Oh, uh, oh, 11. You're already at 11. Halfway through. 11. A punk or new wave album. It's a 12 inch, but I really like this one and it kind of reminds me of my own youth and um, it's actually a great uh, recording. The Fair Sex, Bushman. Number 12, a box set. Let me show you this one because this is quite a beautiful one. Uh, it's a triple album box set uh, that came out on Ostinato Records and it's called Two Niles to Sing a Melody, The Violins and Synth of Sudan. So this is a beautifully curated uh, collection of uh, music from Sudan and uh, particularly music from 70s and 80s, popular music from that region. It's the type of music that otherwise would be quite difficult uh, to find um, because I mean the, the original material probably comes from all kind of rare seven inches uh, acquired by the label and some uh, dedicated collector and um, so I'm a big fan of this type of uh, compilations um, because uh, it, you can immerse yourself um, in a rather comfortable and easy way into this musical world uh, without spending five years uh, looking for uh, rarities. Um, obviously um, it, came, it comes with uh, extensive liner notes um, let me just show you the the presentation. Uh, so this is of course with a, a lot of uh, pictures, a lot of text. So uh, so this is a great thing. You can put these records on your turntable and put on your reading glasses. At least I need some when I want to read something. And um, yeah, and just kind of study about all these. Uh, artists and all the history behind it and uh, it's kind of fascinating that uh, productions like this exist today and uh, that you can access uh, this type of art yeah rambling alarm so uh, let's move on so uh, 13 Album with a sporting theme. <laughs> That's a nice one. And I can't really claim I have many of those. So what about White Rock? White Rock by uh, Rick Wakeman. Uh, Rick Wakeman's uh, soundtrack to the British uh, television uh, reporting of uh, the Winter Olympic Games in Innsbruck in 1976, maybe? I'm not entirely sure which... Yes, 19... Well, it was recorded, yeah, 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 1976 Olympic Games in the city of Innsbruck in Austria. So uh, a lot of uh, sport motifs, uh, snowy, wintry sport motifs on the back. Uh, so um, 
it's a nice album uh, with quite a beautiful uh slightly wallpapery music uh, but uh you know i like this type of stuff um, and i don't know just buying old rick wakeman records always makes me happy number 14 a jazz album let's pick something contemporary idris akamore and the pyramids and his double album shaman or shaman um yeah this is great uh funky playful jazz music uh, very very inventive and at the same time very atmospheric uh, wonderful cover design by tokyo aoyama uh, so he's he's a quite a popular album sleeve artist these days and i think he's very in demand so you see his, his style more and more on records i realized yeah and this overall a great album uh, not not a hook line oriented jazz record, but also not too noisy, but certainly not middle of the road jazz. Um, a best of album. Yeah, I thought let's pick this one. This is a Polydor release of uh, the story of who the who. Um, so um, I'm not a big fan of, uh, or let's put it that way, my entire life I was not a big fan of best of records, I hardly ever had any and I had very kind of a strong opinion on those things like you get the album and uh, otherwise uh, what's the point, so I never bought any best of records. But um, lately I've kind of changed because um, I keep thinking that most of my time and money is being spent into exploring certain certain regions of music that are not that uh, uh, popular and that are kind of uh, far away from the usual track and uh, so I realized just it's probably not in the cards that in my remaining lifetime I will manage to acquire all these classics that I don't have that I kind of should have, but when I made the choice with like a hundred dollar bill in my hand to buy records, I kind of always chose uh, the 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 more exploratory stuff that interested me and always thought like, yeah, everybody already talked about this record, I don't need it. So I have a, like big gaps in the kind of a classic, classic um, oeuvre of rock music. So now I slowly start to realize that uh, probably with some of the big names of rock and pop, I could probably be well covered with a good compilation. So um, I love The Who, I have nothing against The Who and I have Tommy on vinyl and uh, um, I have uh, Who's Next at least on CD. But um, yeah, will I go to a store and kind of start to look for their kind of 60s catalog or their 7s? Probably not. And so um, so I realized having such a double album best off is actually not, not a bad thing for me personally. So um, yeah, this is basically all the big songs uh, that uh, everybody knows. Um, like uh, Magic Bus Substitute, um, Heat Wave, My Generation, Pictures of Lily, Happy Jack, The Seeker, I Can, I Can See for Miles, Squeeze Box, Amazing Journey, The Acid Queen, a lot of stuff from Tommy. Um, and um, yeah, even uh, then the fourth disc is kind of venturing into, into who's next territory with the Won't Get Fooled Again, Behind Blue Eyes, Baba O'Reilly. So um, it's kind of all there. Um, and um, I think it's exactly what I need. Um, so I can kind of more or less close a certain gap without... Uh, uh, because... Um, Honestly, the road ahead of me is shorter than the road behind me. Um, so um, you probably can understand my point. But it's nicely done here. Look, you can see a lot of... A uh, little bit liner notes, but mostly picture material. But uh, I think the Who fans are not much into reading anyway. Oh, <laughs> oh God, somebody will really hate me for saying stuff like that. <laughs> Ah, no, it's also text. Come on. <laughs> so, um, great stuff. But um, that's kind of my new thinking about best of albums. Um, back in the day, I wasn't a fan. Now, when I'm in a record store and I see like a nice best of, particularly if it's a band where I know that I have been kind of sloppy as a collector because I just. Uh, it's only so much I can afford. 
Um, I mean, honestly, as a as a as a vinyl guy, um, technically, I kind of I kind of compete with a lot of people that have a like a very organized life with a very steady job and very kind of respectable income, and I tip my head to all of you. But compared with you, I'm kind of a bum that uh, never had a steady job for the last quarter century basically it's actually a little longer than that mm. i'm a player <laughs> and uh so it's kind of it's actually quite miraculous that uh, someone who just uh, rejected uh, the idea of monetarism and and a, a ambitious income they have actually managed to collect so much so many records but um it has been a trade-off game because I just uh, didn't do other things that cost money, like uh, procreating a child or going to on vacation like twice a year. I've never been on a vacation in my entire life. Um, the entire con concept of a vacation is uh, slightly disturbing to me. But um, so yeah, that's kind of where you can create. Uh, even as a bum, <laughs> you can create certain resources uh, and uh, just. Take that money and buy records. Oh, number 16. Album with at least eight people on the jacket. Let's go with this one. Now, I assume this doesn't need to be on front of the jacket. It can be on the back of the jacket, but it has to be at least eight people. This is our only weapon. Is our music by the band Gonzalez. Uh, and it's a large project, as you can see. Uh, this is far more than eight people, I think like 11 or 12. And um, Gonzalez were kind of spearheading uh, the, the British jazz funk uh, period, uh, which basically climaxed around the late 70s, early 80s. But uh, Gonzalez was already there around 1974. Um, and uh, it's a great, funky, soulful album uh, with a large British uh, lineup. Uh, and uh, for me, particularly important, um, as you can see, the second one from left uh, is uh, Lenny Zakatek, who later became the main vocalist of uh, the Alan Parsons project. Uh... Soundtrack number 17. Soundtrack. Yeah, let's go with uh, this one. Uh... Ryuichi Sakamoto and Alva Noto uh, writing the music for The Revenant. Uh, so uh, this came out as a double album. Nicely done. Quite a beautiful package overall. Uh, and I will not take it all out. And uh, usually I have a whole bunch of soundtracks, but I must say most of my soundtracks are actually on CD. Uh, soundtracks probably lend, not always, but oftentimes they lend themselves better to CDs, I think. Unless you're going for a very kind of funky 60s soundtrack, this is always more sensual to have it on vinyl. In this case, uh, when it comes to Ryuichi, it sometimes can be a bit of a snob. I'm honest enough to admit that. Um, show some VCLT. Well, to have some VCLT records I probably would have to have friends first, um, and so uh, I don't have uh, any VCLT records. I can probably show you one kind of an exception, because a good buddy of mine owns a German record label, and so from time to time he sends me a record. So this is Quattro Stazioni by Leroy. Uh, this is a bit of a rare EP, um, not even... Uh, with Prince on the label, um, but this is wonderful music. I like Leroy, um, particularly his album Bamba Dea is a wonderful, wonderful record and uh, great music for every season. But uh, Quadra Stazione is certainly in the same spirit and I really like it. This is a, quite a beautiful, beautiful, uh, lofty uh, music that you can't really put into a category. I mean, it's all, this is kind of a music that has grown on on the on the substrate of uh, of uh, deep house and uh, breakbeat music and acid jazz and stuff like that, and um, yeah, 
Um, but it's very typical this time and age uh, that a lot of musicians are ma making music that you can't really put in a category anymore. Um, this is uh, this age, this this era of category of strict categorization as we have experienced it when we were very young. I think this is almost over today. So even if you buy jazz records, they oftentimes don't sound anything like jazz records uh, 30, 40 years ago. Um, 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 uh, album with no writing on the jacket, but possibly a picture. So what about The World That Summer by Death in June? Not much on the cover. Only stuff that feels disturbing. But it's a gatefold sleeve, so there is actually text inside, but uh, I don't know if that counts. Um, the question wasn't that precise. <laughs> so, and uh, a seven inch single. So there is this Turkish band called Lalalar who released two seven inches with the uh, Geneva based label Bongo Joe. Um, so those are um, these uh, seven inches with lyrics. And this is a kind of a rock or pop outfit, but uh, with a really great singer and uh, very kind of a dark, somewhat uh, sound that is somewhat reminiscent of, um, well, kind of the new wave, uh, new wave, dark wave, uh, almost gothic -y, uh, era of uh, the late 80s. And uh, overall, I really like them. Uh, I'm still waiting for a entire album to be released by La La La, um, but uh, I don't know, maybe maybe uh, they are in some COVID-19 limbo, who knows. The other 7 inch I can show you is uh, Ashkin Laben by Gökçe Kilincer, it's a wonderful Turkish singer um, that released this uh, single here, uh, which is a uh, yeah, very pleasant, uh, very kind of dreamy pop music, uh, Turkish pop music with a pinch of uh, kind of Latin woven into the sound. Um, quite wonderful. Anyway, uh, two more questions. So uh, this one is a colored vinyl album. I got this uh, only a few days ago. This came out in a very limited edition. I think they printed only like 200 of them. Um, this is uh, the album Atmospheres by Piero Umiliani. Uh, Piero Umiliani was a uh, respected uh, composer of soundtracks to mostly Italian movies, uh, but at the same time uh, he was also a bit of an electronic pioneer, experimenting a lot with the electronic music in the 70s and early 80s. And uh, this record here came out in 1978, I think, originally, uh, but was re-released just uh, yeah, a few days ago. It's kind of the last one that I had uh, received in 2021. Uh, actually on kind of December 30 or 31. So this came on this kind of beautiful, intensely blue vinyl. Um, so this is a kind of pure electronica album, as the title suggests, very atmospheric music, but uh, it has also a strong jazzy vibe and very cinematic in parts. I mean, while it is kind of the typical. Uh, if you, I mean, if you love if you love seventies synthesizer sound, then this is certainly an album for you. Um, but at the same time, you can immediately hear that uh, this guy just knows uh, what the jazz harmonies are, and there is also a great amount of musicianship uh, behind these uh, kind of electronic wobbling uh, experiments. Yeah, atmospheres, Piero Umiliani. Um, great uh, atmospheric album if you kind of if you are into sort of proto ambient music or an, an experimental music uh, of the 70s um but again um probably going to be sold out pretty quickly because i think they printed only like 200 copies of this and finally a album from 1982 now, uh, I have actually a lot of albums from 1982, to my own surprise. And uh, so um, I just picked one without uh, giving it too much thought. What about Dr. Heckel and Mr. Jive by Pigback? Uh, 
I think Big Bag was a fascinating phenomenon uh, on the music scene in the early 80s. Uh, certainly a band that no one was able to manage, so uh, it was pretty clear that uh, this uh, project would uh, appear like a supernova and then completely implode uh, as it happened. So um, this is a great uh, rhythmic, uh, wild, feverish record and uh, a brilliant time capsule of 1982. And we've made it and uh, you are through and uh, I hope uh, you liked it and thought there is something interesting for you here and um, if not so all I could do. Namaste.